Good morning, Sid here from Border Archery. Um, just thought I'd try and explain um, something stack. Um, stacking a bow is a negative aspect, okay? What I'd like to try and do is I'd like to try and describe um, some of the pitfalls in the vocabulary that we use every day and how what we do is really kind of lame, okay? So, first off, I'd like to try and um, draw, um, I can get this in, I'll try and draw a draw force curve, okay? Right, so, um, stack is when a bow gets harder to pull, right? And it feels like you're into a wall, uh, I, I hate that term, it's absolutely bland and nebulous. Um, but anyway, um, MD claims that they, they like to feel a wall for shooting. Um, I, I mentally, I write them off because what they're describing is something that you really, really, really cannot use as a clicker. But we'll get into that one later. So what you've got at the start of the draw force curve is you've got something called preload, right? An outward bulge. Now this is all good stuff because what you're looking for is area under the graph, right? All this good energy that's in here, okay? But then there comes a point where the graph starts going upwards, okay? And that's technically stack. So what we've got is we've got several, um, we've got several problems trying to define the term stack. Okay, so if we look at the idea of um, uh, 28 inches and 40 pounds, okay, I don't know if you guys can see that properly, but yeah, um, <clears throat> right, so at 28 inches you've got 40 pounds in your fingers and the bow's starting to go upwards, that's called stack. Now, the reason why stack's negative is because from this point here, you've got all that area in there that you could have used for energy. Um, the difficulty is that unidirectional materials hasn't allowed you to really use that unless you choose to have a shorter draw length. So if you reduced your draw length, then that point there becomes less, you get less area in there that you've lost. Um, but we'll get into some of this in a minute. Um, now, the idea is that if, um, if you draw a straight line from there to there, you basically have um, uh, two pounds per inch. You end up with a two pound per inch average climb. So when trying to actually define stack, my bow stacks, my bow doesn't stack, my bow is smooth, it's the smoothest bow I've ever shot, quote unquote, endless verbal I'm going to say it, garbage spoken on the internet. Stack can feel like, one, you're overbowed. Two, that you've shot a real stacky tank of a bow for years, and then you try something that still stacks like an absolute mule, but it's smoother than your last bow. Wow, this is the smoothest bow I've ever shot. Sounds good, doesn't it? Absolute rubbish. Yeah. So the problem we've got is the vocabulary simply isn't good enough to try and explain what we're feeling and what we're feeling tends to be limited by our own experience. The Hex 7.5 was a ridiculously buttery smooth limb in that it gained about 0.5 of a pound per inch, not two pounds per inch, 0.5 of a pound out here, okay, the la at the back end of the draw. The thing is, once you got used to hex 9, the hex 7.5 stacked. So therefore your vocabulary is absolutely rubbish. So we, we need to somehow improve our vocabulary and I really, really don't think we're gonna get there, okay? But I'm gonna say this anyway. Now, the next problem is the industry at large, the boyers out there that are making these bows, they ain't gonna tell you whether their bow stacks. Because I can tell you there's a bow out there that's smoother. RCV2 is a damn smooth limb, smoother than any of the conventional limbs out there. Still stacks compared to a CV5. And a CV5 still stacks compared to a 9. So 
you can't really win in terms of the stack stakes. So I'm going to propose um, two methods, two descriptors as to what stack could be. I personally think one of them is factually right, but I'm also going to explain some of the problems with the, the terms I'm going to use. One of them is that as soon as the graph starts going steeper than the two pounds per inch, so let's say you've got a 10 pound bow, that would be what well, quarter of a pound per inch, for example. Um, if it started going above that average line in terms of the steepness after its preload, then you start to get stack. Kind of works. Yeah. Um, you need a DFC though to be able to describe it. But the idea is that if the bow ends up going above its average gain, then it stacks. It's quite a nice simple um, description. Um, it it kind of works. What that fails to do is it fails to describe something like a hex 9. It absolutely fails. Now a hex 9 will give you the same poundage from 24 out to 29. It'll give you the same poundage, it's flat, and then it drops down. Okay? So how do you describe a bow that simply never, ever, ever gets near, and like not even close to near, its average weight gain? You can't. So, um, there are other descriptors out there, and the one that I personally subscribe to, um, I think it's the better one, and I don't use it in public because nobody will ever understand it, is that um, the inflection point, the point where the bow goes from bulging outwards to bulging inwards, that crossover point, and it's quite a smart, um, it's quite a smart location that one, um, unless the design has a particularly insipid non-working recurve, a recurve so small it actually does nothing, it's a long bow with a funky tip on it, um, unless it's that, then this description works for recurves, where when the draw length is shortest and the limb is longest, i.e. when the string finally comes off the, the recurve, so not when you've got string wrap, but when it actually just finally lifts at that, at the the, the yoke, the Y of the, the, the string loop. When that finally lifts off the limb, that's pretty much where the limb is at its smoothest because the limb is longest and the draw length is shortest, therefore the geometry is most favorable. So that inflection point there would be the point where stack starts, where the graph starts to go upwards rather than bulging outwards. It's the point where you change from preload into stack. Now, that location, um, that location is quite a, a fun one because it's technically where stack starts. Um, the next problem you've got is how to define stack. Yeah? With a conventional recurve, that point is around about 20 inches, 19, 20, 21, depending on the, the design, depending on your bolt positions, if you're ILF, depending on your bracing height, um, but that's roughly where it is. That location is um, interesting because what it doesn't do is it doesn't describe the rest. I like the term average. You've got your mean, your median, and your mode styles of average. What it doesn't tell you is really much else. It's just a single simple number. You've got something called standard deviation, which is, what's the difference between 49 and 51? The average is 50 and uh, 1 and 99, the average is 50, but it doesn't tell you what actually happens within the data. Okay, so you've got something where your standard um, deviation tells you how big the data gets in terms of its spread. Yeah. So somehow we need to try and come up with an idea that describes a bow that has a very, very mild, long stack or one that simply just stacks really hard, it hits a brick wall. Um, there are some bows out there that, that have a, a very long 
progressive stack um, and then there's some that hit a wall. To give you some example, they are not all round about here. Um, some of them, the inflection point is out at 26, 27 inches of draw. Um, and that's that's where the smoothness starts. Some of them stack beyond your draw length, beyond the design remit of the limb, which kind of tells you what's going on. Now, one thing about stack that is mega, mega important. Stack and strain, stack and material strain, the, the amount of effort that's in those in those fibers in those material fibers they're not related right poundage and its incremental gain is not related to how close the limb is to breaking i'll give you an example glass fiber will expand and contract i'm doing a banjo here by the way um it'll expand and contract by uh four percent carbon at best is only two percent Yet, if I was to take unidirectional carbon, uh, lip glass out of a limb and replace it with unidirectional carbon, then I basically halved the amount of range that the limb can work in before it fails. And I can guarantee you the draw force curve will look exactly the same if it's the same limb with the same geometry, because both materials are linear in the way they develop poundage. Because of the geometry of the limb, you don't end up with a linear draw force curve. Okay, all right. So the two are directly related. The two are, uh, sorry, the two are directly not related. The stack and material strain, material, the, the amount of grunt that's gone into the, the materials, they are not related. And I'll give you a prime example. Um, back in 19, uh, uh, 2017, we built our first limb with some serious um, let off on it. Um, we, we've had up to two and a half to three pounds of let off. Um, but how can you have, how can you have material strain related to let off? Yeah. The poundage has dropped. What happens? So, um, the term stack, it's a nebulous one. It's based on your personal experience. If somebody says it's the smoothest bow they've ever shot, you need a list of their bows and you need experience of those bows to be able to allocate yourself into those positions to, to understand what that person's experience is. The smoothest bow you've ever shot. Yeah? If somebody mentions um, some of these uh, 1950s, 1960s design bows made 2024, um, they still stack. They, they stack like a lead bomb. Um, they'll say it's the smoothest bow they've ever shot. Well, they haven't shot very much then, as far as I'm concerned. Um, what they don't ever do is they don't ever quantify um, what method of stack that they're trying to come up with. If I was to sell you a bow, bear in mind, plus or minus two pounds, and it's a bit of a little bit of a stacky design, if it's at the two pound up and that's near your personal limit, you're going to feel like that bow stacks. Yeah. Now, the next point I'm going to make, the like a bow that stacks, the like a bow that hits a wall. Um, I've heard this with limbs that change in draw weight per inch, the difference between the two models at 0 0.05 of a pound. Right? That's the difference, not two pounds per inch. Right? The difference between them would be two and then 2.05 of an inch. And they prefer the 2.05 of an inch over the two pounds per inch because they hit a wall. What a load of utter waffle. I've never heard such cods wallop in all my life. Let me try and explain. Do you think you know where your anchor is between there and there and there? No. If you look at any decent target archer, they get within an eighth of an inch of their final anchor point, they settle down, they get the, um, the, the sight on the target, they sit and watch it float, and then they just do that little bit of an expansion through that eighth of an inch of clicker. Do you think in an eighth of an inch of movement, you know when that clicker is gonna go off based on stack, based on the difference between 0 0.05 of a pound per inch, and you're at an eighth of an inch. Do you think you can perceive a difference? No, I don't think so. How you get there, that can be an optimistic feeling, can be not so optimistic. But I can tell you, if you're using stack as a back wall in bare bow, i.e. without a clicker, 
I haven't got a clue where you're going to be because at the start of the shoot, when you're nice and enthusiastic and everything else, cold first couple of shots, then you warm up, your draw length will change because you'll feel easier on the poundage, and then by the time you get to the end of the competition, it's going to become an absolute rat to feel where you are on that clicker, and your shots are going to be all over the place because your draw length is going to change based on I like that wall. I've never had to cod wall up in all my life. Um, I literally snigger when I when I read that comment. I think it's I think it's absolutely preposterous. There you go, good word for the day. So stack, um, for me the technical point for me is stack is where the inflection point happens on the draw force curve. Um, longbows have an inflection point because of preload, um, the from unstrung to bracing height. Um, that position there tells you, and then you get yourself a point where you need better vocabulary. Um, so what I say is, from that point on, you, you then need to start to describe how stack comes about. So, um, for example, the hex nines, they have, they have an inflection point around about 26 and a half inches, depending on the limb length, um, around about 26 and a half inches, and then they gain about 0.2 of a pound um, from there out. Right. The other way to describe it would be, um, a simple one would be to, to work out what the poundage is at uh, 19 inches and what the poundage is at 28 inches. Yeah, um, that kind of tells you. For example, at uh, 19 inches, uh, hex 9 has nearly 90% of its draw weight, um, whereas most bows are only sitting at 65-70% of the draw weight. That's another way to try and describe stack. Um, so at the halfway point, you're um, you're either up here or you're down there or you're down there. So if you if you haven't gained the draw weight at the start of the draw, you're going to have to start doing a lot of draw weight at the back end. Stack, yeah. So if you haven't got the preload, right, you're not going to be able to get that smooth draw, unless you consider two pounds per inch as smooth. In which case, how the heck do you describe something that has no pounds gained? or one pound gain or half a pound gain at the back end. Um, so yeah, there you go. Draw force curves, the technicality of trying to describe stack. Okay, any questions, any comments, observations, um, challenges, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, thanks for watching.